How y'all doing? Good. 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 Uh, when Kevin asked me to speak here, I think it was back right after I got elected Lieutenant Commander-in-Chief, I said, sure, I'll, I'll be happy to. And uh, just to give you a little background on me, I'm past Alabama Division Commander, past Army Commander. Uh, I feel like I'm at home up here in East Tennessee. Uh, I got a daughter that's a sophomore at, I know it's not married, but it's her. Uh, she's a sophomore at Herbal College. And, uh, so we spend a, a lot of time up in Myrtle, especially during football season, watching ball games. As a matter of fact, Joe and Kevin came and tailgated with us. We know how to put on a little bit of spread. We showed them how us SEC boys did it. It's good Alabama wings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll take a minute. Um, you know, Kevin, let me just talk about where we're at today and, 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 and what, I, what we see as the future and what we want to see as the future of the SCV, both myself and, and the current Commander-in-Chief, Kelly Bear. And uh, I was thinking a lot about that, and uh, it didn't really hit me till last night. We were having dinner at a, at a restaurant in Chattanooga, and a uh, nice restaurant. And I'm sitting there, I, I watch people a lot. I guess that's just my background in sales and marketing. I watch people. And I started noticing just how much money was spent on plastic surgery in that building. And y'all, I'm not kidding. I mean, I, 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 it was all kinds of money. And I didn't realize the lady right beside me, she was probably 55 years old, and she's had at least $100,000 worth of it. I mean, her face, her neck, her eyes, gentlemen, other places, ladies, y'all know what I'm talking about. There's children in here. And it hit me. It's because we don't know who we are. We don't know who we want to be. We want to be somebody we're not. Uh, I mean, y'all hear me talk. By no means am I a highfalutin person. But yeah, when I was in sales for 20 years, I've eaten off $1,000 China. But, you know, I sure did love eating off a paper plate here tonight. <laughs> this is more like home. This is who I am. Uh, you know, I guess you could say, yeah, I'm a little bit of a politician because of where I'm at in the SCV. But you can ask this man right here. Most politicians, if you ask them a question, they're not going to tell you what you don't want to hear. You will hear what you don't want to hear from me, will you not? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Brutally honest. Yes. So what it boils down to, I think our biggest problem, the reason we're still right now at 30,000 members, is, is the society that we live in today. We live in a society that has, in, in many cases, and we, hey, listen, we all have neighbors that have done this. You say, I'm a member of the Sons Confederate Veterans, and they look at you with just a, 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 just a growl on their face, you know, because, oh, you like that old dirty battle flag. You're darn right I do. And it ain't dirty. It ain't no rag. It's my flag. And they're the people that are teaching our children today. Are the ones that are saying these flags <coughs> represent slavery. Represent oppression. Well, I hate to tell them, but the red in this flag represents the, flag, the blood of my ancestors. And many of y'all's ancestors as well. <clears throat> They're the ones, though, that are teaching our children. They're the ones right now, and I don't care if it's Nashville, Tennessee, Montgomery, Alabama, Jackson, Mississippi, Washington, D.C. They're the ones that are trying to dictate to us as individuals what we should and what we should not respect. Look at Pensacola, Florida. The city council, I think it was Thursday afternoon, they wanted to get the battle flag down. They had been flying, I think it was, I know Mobile is seven flags, so please, I think it's seven flags, it may have just been six flags. But they flew, well those, those flags were Georgia, don't they? <laughs> but they had the flags of every flag that, 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 that they had been either a state or a territory of throughout the history that we know. Well, they wanted to get shed of this one. Well, there was an uprising. So they decided, we'll compromise. We'll get shed all of them, but that 
we'll keep the, uh, the, 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 the American flag. That's the only flag, that, that what they call the American flag, what we call the United States flag. That was the compromise. It ain't right. It's history. When I was a kid growing up, I always heard if you don't learn any history, history's going to repeat itself. I guess they forgot about the national banking system and Andy Jackson, didn't they? Because uh, I think yep. history about repeated itself a few years ago yeah. uh, here in this country. So that's what our battle, when I say ours, I'm, I'm not talking about just the SCV. I'm talking about people from the South that are proud to say, my home's in Alabama, my home's in Tennessee. We're the ones that are proud to say, you know, war reap. At least I am. I know some of y'all are. But y'all glad to say, hey, Tennessee volunteers. There's a reason for the war reap. There's a reason for the Tennessee volunteers. There's a reason for the Louisiana Tigers. There's a reason for the old Miss Rebels of a few years ago, not the black bear from Louisiana that now is the mascot for a Mississippi team. Anyway, makes no sense. But it's called politically correct. That's not the PC like I like. I'm PC. I'm proudly competitive. But, you know, there's a reason that, those, that, that these schools, these state schools, are called what they are. There's a reason that Maryville is the Scots. They were founded by Scotsmen. I mean, you know, Scott, they were of Scottish descent. They were Presbyterians that moved down here and decided to start a school in the South. And that's where we're at today. Can we do something? Is it too late? I, I, I don't want to say it's too late, but I, I think that unless we get more younger people involved in the SCV, the UDC, the OC, well, all Confederate organizations, until we do that and, and start trying to make a difference, it may be too late. But I'll be damned if I'm going to stop trying. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not. First semester at Maryland, Morgan Ann, her, her major's history, and uh, her, she had to take a subject. The subject was called the history, the history of the South in the 19th century, and I thought, uh oh, <laughs> this is your first semester at this school, and uh, this could get ugly because it's a small university, small college. Uh -huh. I knew she was going to have that professor two or three more times, so I had to swallow my pride and just tell her, look. Whatever this professor tells you, even though you know it's a lie, remember you're going after one thing, and that's a great thing. You know the truth. Come to find out the professor's pretty good. He and I still disagree on East Tennessee. Uh, that's fine. But because he still says that the majority of the people in East Tennessee fought for the Union. That's a lie. Amen. Half of them didn't, Amen. didn't even fight for either side. They didn't want to be on either side of the, uh, 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 of the conflict. I mean, they, they didn't want to do it. Uh, so you can't, he can't, but of course that's his argument. And, and uh, he's a nice guy, so I respect him not being very smart on certain things. But uh, he's got a lot more letters behind his name than just mine, J.R., you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but, you know, so I, talking about the youth, that, that I guess now that I've chased that rabbit all the way around the briar patch, we'll come out of it. In the SCV as a whole, we have over 30,000 members. Only 780 of them are cadets, meaning 12 years or younger. There ought to be more than that. There ought, well, there ought to be more than 30,000 in the SCV. Yes. But there should be more than right at, say, 800 cadets. We should have 2,500, 3,000 cadets. That is the time when these kids start learning stuff. When they're, I mean, I remember when I was 10, 11 years old going, you know, hunting my granddaddy and listening to stories about World War II. And then tell, listening to him tell stories about his daddy during World War I. And, you know, heck, I can't tell you what happened to supper last night, but I can still tell you some of them stories. I remember it like it was yesterday. So, in order to get to those kids, we, as an organization, are going to have to change. iPads are here to stay until the next thing comes along. iPhones, smartphones in general. 
you know, everybody either has an email address or has someone very close to them that has one that can get them information. We do a thing at National called the SCV Telegraph. How many of y'all have heard of it? We had less than 4,000 people on the Telegraph. Less than 4,000 people get the Telegraph. That is the best way for us at National to get information out next to social media. And so we do the best we can with it. But it's, it's, it's not being utilized because, I, you know, I don't, I don't know why. Uh, I guess it was kind of like me texting. I was kicking and screaming until I was 35. And now I'm a private contractor and I text most of my customers or they text me when they're ready for me to come to see. Uh, I just, you know, it's just, it's, it's where we're at today in, on, on that side of society. But we're going to have to, in order to get to these younger, and I, when I say younger members, y'all, when I go to the national organization, even the divisions, I look around the room and a lot of times I'm 43 years old and, and I'm still one of the kids in, in the room. I'm still one of the young guys. We need to have some, some, some younger folks. In order to do that, we're going to have to go to, to, to phone apps or, or apps like that so we can get information out. They can pull stuff out quicker, easier. That's where they're at. That's, that's, that's how they are, have learned. Uh, you know, the magazine. The magazine's a great thing. But I tell everybody, you know, in order to help us save money, you can still take your phone to the bathroom. Get it paperless. Let's, let's have a way to get it paperless. Allow these younger members who don't necessarily want to get that magazine and have it, that tangible magazine, they would rather have it online so they could read it on the go. Uh, and that will give them an opportunity to opt out of the regular magazine, save us some money. Uh, I, I, one of my platform items was a thumb drive, and each camp will be getting it very soon. The reason some of my platform items were kind of held back a little bit. We were in transition from executive director to executive director. I did not want to get some stuff started, be midstream with it, and then have to get on board with someone else. But we do have the thumb drives out for the camps. And what these are, these are basically new member packets. You can tuck that thumb drive in your pocket. You can give a new member all the information that they need about our organization and about your camp, about the division, about the camp, about the whole structure of the SCV. Uh, that thing will hold all kind of information. And uh, the key that, I hate to, I mean, I, I truly believe we're going to have to be more involved on social media. I mean, many of you I'm friends with on Facebook. I mean, we keep up. I mean, I, I know what Joe had for supper last night. He knows what I cooked for supper last night, so does Kevin. I had to get on with Kevin. I like, I like, I like drag racing. He doesn't come home at 6 o'clock on Sunday evening. Well, of course, he watches on ESPN3, so all Sunday afternoon, I'm scrolling through Facebook, and there's Kevin with John Forrest this morning. Well, doggone, why am I going to watch it tonight? <laughs> I mean, so, so I did learn it pretty pretty quickly. If I saw Kevin, I would slow down on scrolling, and then when I saw Kevin, I'd just you know, flip it up real quick. Uh, <laughs> but... You know, my job as Lieutenant Commander-in-Chief is to, is to assist in recruiting and retention. That's what my main focus uh, of, and whatever else that the Commander-in-Chief throws at me. Um, one thing that I'm doing, in the process of doing now, we're coming up with some, we call them widgets in marketing. What widgets are, are pens, pencils, all that stuff, notepads to give to people when they come to your recruiting booth. We're going to get this material, have it available for the camps, be able to sell it to them at cost, whatever that cost may be. Because let's say you buy 20,000 uh, ink pens, we get them for a quarter. You buy 250, you get them for a dollar, dollar ten. So it's going to be a lot less expensive for the camps to have this stuff on hand. In the past, we just haven't had that stuff available. And, I mean, when I was in the nursery business selling, you know, going around all over the country selling plants, believe it or not, I gave away hair combs. Sure did. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it, it, but it did two things. It did two things. Number one, it gave, it, an old man told me years ago when I was 21, 22 years old, he said, son, whatever you do, 
Always have something to hand somebody when you're in a, when you're in a booth. If it's nothing more than a piece of candy, have something in your hand to give them when you shake their hand. Well, ours was cones. And not only did they come get the cone, it gave them a chance to give me a hard time. And I got thick skin, I can take it, you know. Uh, it didn't bother me a bit, but it gave me an opportunity to converse with them. And nine times out of ten, they would remember that cone next time they saw it. Hey, he had those Korean boxwood. I meant to call that guy. So something like that does work. We're trying to get that, and it'll be available by February. Uh, we've got a, we're, start, we're doing a, the first time ever, we're going to do a seminar at Elm Springs, February 21st. It's going to be for basically division commanders and division recruiting officers, and anybody else that division commanders deem they feel like needs to come to it. Uh, it'll be a one-day seminar. We're going to have just, basically what we're going to do is we're going to sit around we call it the big table at headquarters. And we'll have our formalities of getting the meeting going, and then we're going to sit there and we're going to, as my granddaddy used to say, we're going to sling it up against the barn wall and see what might stick. And then we're going to take whatever might stick, we're going to take five of those items, and we're going to 100% effort across the entire organization, focus on those five items and sit down six months, 12 months later, and say, okay, guys, what worked, what didn't work? If, the, if two of these items works great, we're going to continue to do those two, and we're going to try to get three more. If these three that didn't work, worked fine, say, in Virginia, okay, we all keep that initiative going in Virginia, and try these other three in the meantime, too. And... Try to get it on paper what 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 we can do, what where our demographics are. I had a guy ask me the other day, he said, what, what are you going after? What's the demographics you're going after? And I said, anybody between 12 and 90. And I started laughing, and he said, he said no, really, that's no, I'm kidding. I said, I want that 42, 43-year-old. Because most of them at that point, how many of y'all seen that commercial about the first having the first child and having the having the uh, sanitize the hands, rub your face and stuff. And then the next baby, she's at the mechanic's shop and the guy's standing all the grease on it. He said, that'd be $493. And she goes, okay, let me write your check. Hold him. <laughs> we've all been there. Don't act like you haven't. I mean, we've all been there. Most times with your first kid, you're trying to make up for everything that you didn't get when you were a kid. I didn't get to play baseball and go travel ball. Well, we're going to take little Johnny travel ball. Well, by the time Billy Bob shows up three years later, boy, you ain't you ain't no good at baseball. <laughs> I mean, why don't you go in there and read a book? <laughs> I mean, so that that's kind of so that at that age, you know, you you you've slowed down a little bit. I mean, we cannot compete. I don't care if you're the the the, the tic tac toe club. You cannot compete against children and their sports. I mean, even today, I work my SCV schedule around the Maribel College football schedule because we try to go to every home game. Uh, they're kind enough to give my daughter a lot of money for her education. Well, I'm kind enough to show up and pay them a little bit of money to watch a ball game. So, but, you know, at that point, too, most of them are settled in and they've got a little money and they will be able to help us when we need help. Uh, I've got camp members that I've never met in my camp. <clears throat> never met. But <clears throat> let's say we're having a, putting in a, a, a new monument over here at the city cemetery. It's a $1,200 monument. First guy that'll mail a check are those guys. Because they say, okay, I can't make it to the meetings, but I believe in this organization and what they stand for. So that's kind of what we're doing. Uh, we're also fixing to, I'm fixed to initiate, I've got some hats getting ordered, uh, trying to do some, getting the past members to re, 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 rejoin the organization. We're going to try a ball cap giveaway. You pay your $30 to come back into the organization, we'll waive the $5 reinstatement fee, and we'll send you this free ball cap. It seems to work for NRA and for Ducks Unlimited and for all these organizations because I get hit with those things about once every two or three weeks. 
And a lot of times after that, you go to Walmart and you'll see those NRA ball caps walking around there. So it must be working a little bit. Uh, you know, so I, we're doing some stuff at National to try to assist the camps. Uh, one th initiative that we're looking at, that we're really going to look at in February, is I've, the Lieutenant Commander Chief has a $30,000 a year budget for advertising. Y'all, that, you can't, that ain't a drop in the bucket. You can't hard to do anything with $30,000. I mean, it's, it's hard to even get on some of the web stuff, the, the, the banners on the web pages. You can only get on for so long for so much money. So we got to talking, and it's just up in the air. I was, you know, when you're sitting around talking about marketing, you're like a what-if situation. And so I said, you know, think about this. I said, what if every camp pledged $10 a month? advertise. Well, everybody kind of, well, you think that'd work? I said, wait, let me add this up. At 900 camps, that'd be $108,000 a year for advertising. We'd be swinging with the big boys then. We could get a lot of that. And that's something to, that, we're, that we're talking about. And just to ask, hey, you know, what do y'all think? And it's that's what that meeting in February is going to entail, some of that stuff. I'm just trying to get your division commander to kind of up to speed on that one. Breeze oil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, $10, I mean, I, of course, we, we did the $10 dues increase. You thought the world had come to an end, even though it was less than a cup of coffee a day. And that less than a cup of coffee a day is less than you making a cup of coffee a day at the house, you know. So, uh, but we're, you know, we're trying. We're, We've done a few different things. We've changed up the leadership workshops. Used to, uh, the leadership workshops basically were camp officer duties. That was the main thing. Talking, and then you'd have a few other things going on there. Uh, not a whole lot, but a few others. What we've done is we've actually changed it to where we have a session on recruiting and retention and marketing. How to make a camp grow. Talking to this camp, I ain't got to tell y'all how to make a camp grow. The Hobbs camp and, and, and the road, y'all, we were both growing at the same time at just a miraculous speed. But a lot of camps don't. Uh, we had a set, at the first one we had that, we had a session on social media. And even I was shocked at some of the statistics that were shown. Especially on the tweet, the tweeter. The ages that were doing the most tweeting amazed me. They were like, 55 to 75. Once you have, of course, the, the 20 and unders, they, they, of course, they blew everybody out of the water. They're tweeting like 700 times a day. Uh, but we had, and then we had a deal on a, a session on public relations and how to prepare a press release. And uh, also, you know, we, he kind of went into the have one guy in your camp. Be your point man to try to head trouble off before it happens. I'm that for my camp. I can get on the phone right now and I can call the mayor of Athens, I can call the county commission chairman, I can call either one of my, all three house reps that are in Armstrong <coughs> County, I can make a phone call to right here, right now. Actually, probably better to text all of them. But I can get a hold to them and say, hey, look, we've got an issue fixing to come up, we just want to give you a heads up. When they're prepared for a problem, they're much more likely to be on our side than to be hit up just all of a sudden out of clear blue. If they can prepare for it, we're in better shape. And it went into that. Uh, fundraising. We're all hobbled in this fundraising deal right now because we can't do the raffles. We had a, had, had a set session on that, how we can do fundraising. How we can, you know, how to go about it, so on and so forth. And uh, believe it or not, a couple of camps were in there, and they were like, "That's crazy. That's not going. That's not going to work." But I was like, "Well, just try." It. Well, they had a hamburger, just a hamburger cooking, had a little get together. They wound up raising like three hundred fifty dollars. And I'm like, "How much advertising did you do?" He said, "Oh, we just told the local some some of the local camp members and." They brought some friends and so on and so forth. And I said, okay, so word of mouth made you $350. I said, imagine if you'd advertise it. I know, turkey shoot, y'all had one up here, what, lap, or somebody up around here did. 
Murphy's Barrel, Murphy's Barrel has one. I knew it was a Tennessee camp. <laughs> She's, she keeps up, and my schedule better than I do. Uh, to be quite, I mean, I, I have three calendars. I got one on my phone, one, one on my iPad, and she's got one, and that's the one I go by. <laughs> uh, and then at that same thing, those workshops, time permitting, we have, uh, we'll go through the, 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 the duties of camp officers. I feel like that that really falls more on the division and the brigades to, 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 to assist in that. But, you know, we still hit on it a little bit because, you know, inevitably, no matter how hard the adjutant tries to tell the camp adjutant to have your report in on time, he forgets. And then, of course, the camp adjutant, the division adjutant, then has to hear it from the national adjutant. It just kind of, you know, it does go downhill. Uh, and uh, one other thing we're talking about that I'd like to kind of discuss is the museum at Elm Springs. It is a reality. Show me. <laughs> I have seen the drawings and it is coming together. I hope, I hope by at least mid-February we have something a little more firm in stone as far as building, building structure. The current one, a few of us aren't all warm and fuzzy with them, and we're not, it's just not big enough. Because what we've got now is going, it's, it's kind of like in Alabama, I don't know about Tennessee, but public schools, if you build a new school, you can only build it 10% larger than what the current, the current uh, enrollment at that school is. Well, our county built a new elementary school on the county line, the largest growing part of Limestone County. The day they opened it, they had 35 portable classrooms in the parking lot. There was nowhere to park. So that's what we're concerned about with the museum is we built it, say, the size of this room with no thought of expansion. Before we know it, this is going to be full and we're we'll right back in the same boat we're in now. So, uh, but it is a reality and we're going towards it. It's something that, you know, y'all think that we need because we've already lost the museum. Well, we're in the process of losing, but I say we've lost the museum. We're losing, uh, I mean, valuable space at other spots. They're not, they're preaching their side of it. They're not preaching our side of it. For us to get the truth out, we're going to have to have our own place to speak the truth. We do that for the Sam Davis Youth Camp for the, for, for the kids. It's available. Uh, we're looking to expand the one back in the Army of Tennessee. That's something that we're really positively looking at in the future. Uh, I'd like to see the divisions start having these youth camps themselves, have youth days. Have them, I, you know, Alabama's different than Tennessee. Tennessee's like this and we're like that. But, you know, have one in central or middle Tennessee, east Tennessee, west Tennessee. You know, I mean, do something like that. Uh, and that's basically... You know, I'd like to stand up here and say that we've, in the last six months, we've gained 10,000 members and everything, we're winning every battle we're fighting. The only thing I can say is we've got one battle we are taking to the Supreme Court. That's the Texas Division's license plates. The appellate court in Texas found in our favor. So they appealed it, meaning Texas, to the Supreme Court. And we said, bring it on. We'll see what happens. It's going to be hard for them to deny that that other states like Alabama, Virginia, Tennessee, Louisiana, so on and so forth, we all have we all have the same plan. So it's going to be tougher on, on them to find against us, and that's one I think we need to fight. Yeah, <coughs> we need to fight. This isn't like a, a t-shirt case when they've got a set of rules that says you can't wear a t-shirt. That's hard to win. They're winnable, but they're not easy. So, we're still working. It's still going. And like I said, I'm not 